this slid type of log that you can see in the picture out here and over here. This is the common mode of uh, closing a particular door or a window in most of the places in the rural India or the places where too much of uh, uh, cost is not required in the places. Uh, so our idea was to redesign this particular thing that can be used as a digital lock and we could control it wirelessly. So the meaning of wirelessly is that we didn't want anyone to touch this particular thing to open the lid. The reason is since we all are aware of this COVID-19 feature and that most of the people, not only over here, in the places where the humans are in a very common, uh, you could say, quantity, let's say in the public places. The, I was talking about this lid system. We use our hands to touch it and open the lid front and back to open the door. So the main idea was to redesign this particular thing using a digital means so that less uh, human interface is required while opening and closing those lid. So we came up with this particular design using a motor and a wireless RF communication. So, so what are the key features while using this structure slot? Basically, we have been using two platforms, as I told earlier also. We have been using the Arduino board and the RF transmitter receiver boards. So the Arduino was selected because most of the people in uh, places are not aware of programming. Let's talk in general. I would say many people know it, but in general, most of the people think that programming is a very tough thing. So Arduino is the only source I found that is cheap enough so that uh, not much of coding is required and we could just modify a few lines of a ready-made code and we could uh, build up this particular project so and uh, the cost definitely i'll go on with the bill of materials in the end of the slide so the exact cost of this entire project came out to be less than 1100 rupees fine so that's not a big deal so if we can we are even to the st study to make it further drown uh, reducing some of the components uh, and uh, we'll get to it later on so let's begin with the task so these are the steps that are involved in building the touchless lock first we'll be understanding the concept then we'll be moving forward to the procedure for hardware assembling using the transmitter side then we'll move on to the procedure for assembling the receiver side after the hardware interfacing is done, we will be coding our Arduino Uno board using the Arduino IDE. Those who are not familiar with Arduino or its coding, I'll be going through the basic steps of how to write a code or how to basically debug a code and compile and verify it along with uploading of that code on the Arduino board. Finally, once our entire board is programmed, we will be testing it to check on whether that particular code is working as per requirements or not. Last but not the least, we'll be going to the question and answers. Whatever questions you have in your mind, we can put forward in the end of the site. Okay? So we start with the assembling of the transmitter side. So what does our transmitter basically comprises of? Our transmitter section comprises of is an Arduino Uno board, one ADXL335 accelerometer module, and an ST12D, ST12E encoder IC along with an RF transmitter module. So I use these three components basically to comprise my transmitter section and we'll be using a battery or you can use a USB cable to connect to your Arduino board to power it up and the rest of the circuitry. It's up to you. For testing process, process, we basically used a USB cable to power up the Arduino board. And those of you who are uh, new to Arduino or those who are not that much familiar to Arduino, I would just go briefly with the key points of it. So you can, Arduino Uno is an open source platform board that has inbuilt libraries, inbuilt sketches that can be downloaded from the internet and you can modify those sketches and reburn them into this microcontroller on the Arduino board using a USB cable. It's very simple, very easy. I'll show you in the end. So you can power up the Arduino using the USB or you can power it up through the DC jack. Along with that, you can see the number of pins out here. These are the digital input output pins that can be used to interface any digital uh, uh, component, let's say an LED motor relay, 
anything or such any sort of those things can be connected to any of these pins as per our requirement similarly we have the power circuitry out here where these pins are for the power section we have a 3.3 volt power 5 volt power and ground pins out here so whenever i am going to use my arduino board in any of the projects i can simply connect a usb cable to it and i can use these pins out here to use 5 volt 3.3 volts or ground from these pins to any other circuitry similarly these are the analog input pins available in this arduino board that can be used for taking the analog inputs so i'll be basically using these pins out here and two pins out here these pins i'll be using to interface my adxl335 to the analog input pins i'll be using these six pins and interfacing it out here in the program code i'm going to mention what these particular pins have been used for or they have been configured for similarly i'll be using pins out here to connect to my st12eic for transmitting so adxl335 is an accelerometer that's quite uh, using its app uh, it has been used in quite a number of applications some of them being the gaming or the gesture controlled uh, projects uh, it's very easy to use it since we can see we are having the three axes made out here x y z x y z so we can just clarify on the x axis that is the tilting of this accelerometer module we can see these capacitors out here x y and z these small capacitors so we are talking about these capacitors that they are used to select the bandwidth of the accelerometer so we can define the bandwidth range of these accelerometers and based on those bandwidths if this accelerometer module is tilted in the left that means x direction or y direction or z direction we get some changes in these capacitance based on that we are getting some analog inputs that can be fed to any of the analog pins of our these these pins of our arduino uno board so this is how we mounted our accelerometer module on our arduino uno board in the image you are seeing a free duino board so it's basically a copy of your original arduino board since it's an open source platform so we have basically copied it and made our own this arduino board and renamed it to free duino board it's basically from technido company so we have also modified it and made our own board also finally you paste or you basically embed this accelerometer module on your arduino uno board and you have this excel uh, this transmission module as i have made out here i have used an st12e encoder ic a resistor this is my rf transmission section and this is the antenna you can use a long wire also instead of this antenna what i have used out here so you can use the long wire also for this okay this is the basic connections of connecting your st12e with your rf transmission you can see there are four pins ground pin data pin vcc and the antenna so the ground pin has been connected to the ground section the data pin has been connected to the d out pin that is pin number 17 of st12e while the vcc is connected to pin number 18 of your st12e that is vcc for the antenna i have connected a wire to it okay so the main function is whatever parallel data whatever data i am going to get from the arduino board or that is going to be fed to your st12e like i said over here see this accelerometer module is going to be mounted on this arduino uno board whenever i am going to tilt this entire arduino board along with the accelerometer module in x direction or y direction it is going to make some changes in these capacitance values based on those changes in the capacitance values the accelerometer module is going to feed some signals in the analog form to these pins those analog signals being received by these pins are prefed with some code in the atmega module atmega microcontroller over here the microcontroller has been preprogrammed to make some changes in its digital output pins if it receives some input at its analog input pins whatever values i get in the x or y axis out here 
that has been configured in this to take some action through these output pins and those actions are being fed to this ht12 eic in the parallel in form these four pins parallel data in forms as you could see i showed here this parallel data in forms these parallel data input from the arduino is fed to the ht12 eic and then it provides me a serial data out through pin number 17 that is fed to the antenna that serial data is serially transmitted through here so this is for connecting the wires as you can see these pins i'm talking about these particular pins and this accelerometer module oh i'm sorry uh, i was talking about the ht12 e ic and the arduino board so in the arduino board pin number 8 9 10 and 11 it's up to you if you are using two dc motors you can use four pins if you are using just one dc motor you can use either of these two pins pin number 8 and 9 or pin number 10 and 11 so in my code i have used pin number 8 and 9 so 8 has been connected to d3 that is s4 you can connect these are the four pins that are configured here as s1 s2 s3 s4 so i am connecting my s4 to 8 and s3 to 9 s4 to 8 these s4 to 8 and s3 to 9 normal vcc ground you have to connect to the vcc and ground pins so after the connections and the mounting of the accelerometer module on our arduino board this is what we get basically this is the arrangement that we made so we use a usb cable initially to power up this arduino uno board and you can even mount this on your hand like that means your wrist you can use a adhesive tape to mount this thing on your wrist or you can use a wooden board or a plastic board and you can stick both the components on it using a hot glue so it's totally up to you how you are going to use this transmitter section receiver module so basically this is the section we can consider for receiver module so this is the receiver of your rf transmission reception section this receiver module is connected to ht12d ic that is the decoder ic over there we had used the ht12e ic this one ht12e ic that is encoder ic in the receiver section we are using ht12d the decoder ic so whatever data that is being captured by this rf transmission receiving section that is receiver section through its antenna that data is moved out from the d out pin that is this pin pin number 2 d out pin to your input of ht12d ic so that serial data from the receiver is fed to ht12d and that is again broken down into the parallel data format that is d0 d1 d2 d3 internally through this ht12d we don't have to do anything the only thing is this is going to receive the data that serial data is going to be input to the ht12d that ht12d will automatically convert that data into parallel form and we can get those four bits from d0 d1 d2 d3 from these four pins so we are going to take the data through this receiver module feed it to ht12d from ht12d i am just using two bits so those two bits i am using to my l293d motor driver ic so as you all must be familiar for driving a dc motor in digital applications most of the times we are using a motor driver ic that and the common among that is the l293d so as you can see from the pin out diagram at the most i can connect two motors like one motor i have connected to pin number 3 and pin number 6 similarly i can connect one motor to pin number 14 and pin number 11 but in my application i had used just one motor so i have drawn in this diagram at pin number 3 and pin number 6 so whatever input i am taking from ht12d is being fed to your l293d pin number 2 similarly the other bit is being fed to pin number 7 of l293d just have a look at this diagram 
So I am getting two bits. One at pin number two, the other at pin number seven. Those two bits can be one zero. That means a motor will move either clockwise or it will be zero one. The motor will move anti-clockwise. So based on the values that I am getting over here, if it is one zero, the motor will move in clockwise direction. If it is zero one, the motor will move in anti-clockwise direction. So this is the simple funda that we used out here. We'll get some signals at the RF receiver section. The RF receiver section will forward it to the ST12 DIC. The ST12 DIC will forward it to the L293 D motor driver IC. That motor driver IC is going to drive the motor. Okay. Now coming up to the mechanical parts section, as in the image you saw that. We are using the DC motor, but this particular mechanical arrangement is to be made. We have not made this. Make this mechanical part. So what are the tools you are going to require for this particular mechanical arrangement? You'll be you'll be needing a marking pen and you'll be a hot glue gun. These are the only tools you'll be requiring mostly. Yes, uh, definitely a screwdriver set also. A DC motor of 100 RPM, nine volt battery with connector cap and connecting wires. Nut and bolt, two inch length and size. Door stopper arrangement with lid. You can use a wooden or a plastic block. Like I have mentioned earlier, you can use either a wooden block or you can use a plastic, whatever material you feel like. Or you can even embed this thing particular inside a wall. So it's up to you how you want to make this latch arrangement in your door. So you can use the material specifically. And you might be using an unused syringe. I'm again specifying it. Do not use a used up syringe uh, cap out here. We need a new one because a used one would be uh, basically it will be having some uh, harmful uh, things. So it's better we use a new cap of the syringe. Then the ST12D IC, the receiver section and L293D motor driving module. So you can use this ready-made module or you can make your own module also. It's very simple. You can find the videos on our YouTube channel also. Let's work on the receiver section. The first step is you need to mount the door stopper sled on the wooden block. So you can basically place and make a marking through a marker on these particular four holes. You can use a marker, make four holes out here so that you know exactly where to drill for putting up the screws. Second step, you remove that slit. Use an electric drill machine to make the drilling at the particular points that you have made. Third step, you place the lid back and you screw it up on the four markings and the drilling that you have done. Finally, you see it that it's tight enough that it does not come out from the wooden board or the plastic material. Next, you can use an adhesive. In our case, in our lab, we used an M steel. That's basically a mixture that is joined for pipes and tubings. So in mostly sanitary applications, but in our case, we had to join a bolt. So we use it a good uh, stuff. So you can purchase it from the market. It's uh, very cheap and you can mix it up to make a paste that can be seen in the figure out here. So basically that paste is molded on the bolt that we had so that it is able to fix it up on the See, We have used that M seal on the bolt and fixed it up to the lid, that lid, so that it's tightly bound. So it does not remove from air. You can additionally use an adhesive like bevy stick and all those things. And then you can use this M seal material so that it does not move out from here. Then you need uh, the nut or the screw. You need to screw it up a bit so that it gets fixed up inside this. Now we come to the needle. Take out the needle, throw it away in the dustbin. You simply need this cap. We are going to cut this cap from here and use it for attaching it to the DC motor notch here so that this screw easily gets fixed up and gets fixed to this DC motor. This way, see, we use that syringe cap, cut it down and we pasted it into the shaft of the DC motor. 
and then that screw that we had screwed it up to this particular arrangement we pushed it up a bit so that it fixes it up inside this dc motor now it's a single entity whenever the dc motor is going to rotate this screw is going to rotate either in clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction you'll be needing batteries to power up this particular section the motor and the circuitry out here so this is one of the designs we found on the net that can be used as a digital lock arrangement we can bolt it up like they have shown in the image similarly you can do it in your home also or your office or whether applications wherever you want okay for those of you who are new to arduino uh, this is how we are going to start up you need to download the arduino uh, uh, ide from the arduino website i am having this arduino 1.0.4 that's not the latest one you can download the latest version from the internet so once you've downloaded it and you open up the folder you get this particular executable file you need to double click on this executable file to run the arduino it will show something like this that's opening the arduino then you get this particular window opened up this is the first window that opens up whenever you run an arduino ide on a laptop or desktop so i'm just elaborating these points the shortcut keys out here have been elaborated over here this stick is used for compiling and verification the right arrow is used for updating uploading basically that means whenever you want to upload your code to any microcontroller on the arduino board you will be using this particular button new sketch you want to make a new you want to basically i would clarify again by sketch i mean a program in normal languages coding we use a program to write something while in arduino we don't use the term program we use the term sketch so for writing a new sketch you can use the shortcut you can open an old sketch using this particular shortcut as shown here and you can save this particular sketch by using this shortcut here all right a basic example you can check like those of you who don't know coding at all you can go to the file menu go to the examples and over here there are numerous examples available for you you can use basics digital analog communication whichever you want to just uh, study more you can go on for that in the simplest case you can go for the basics and the blinking of an led once you click on that this particular code will open up where they have specified the the code you can see the code is so small we are having inbuilt functions the setup function the loop function i'll tell you later on how to use them and simply we have defined the led pin number 13 so it's very simple you need to verify it upload it that's it it's going to compile and it's going to display on your arduino board how that led is blinking so it's that simple i'll go through again file examples basics blink once the program opens up or the sketch opens up you can verify it or compile it and then you can upload it after uploading you can see that the program is running yes definitely few step i missed up before that you need to go to tools you need to select your arduino board like you might be using arduino uno you might be using arduino mega you might be using arduino micro so whichever board you have got from the market whichever you are selecting you have to select the board from here before uploading so in our case i have selected an older version so i selected arduino ng or older you can use arduino uno it's up to you then you need to select the serial port like by default whenever you connect your arduino using a usb cable to your laptop or desktop a com port is assigned to it so you need to clarify which communication port your arduino has been attached to your laptop or desktop so that comes out under tools serial port over here you can see the communication port so as i said after that we need to verify it will show you done compiling it will tell you the size of your program code or your sketch code upload it once you upload it you can see the arduino board is mentioned over here and the communication port is also mentioned over here okay 
so very simple go to file go to basics open up a new sketch verify it compile it and then upload it you can see you uh, see it running on a board now coming back to adxl similarly you can test for the adxl module go to file examples sensors adxl 335 you can select from here you get this particular ready made sketch of adxl 335 module opened up from here you can make slight changes as per your requirements like i'll describe it later on the code there i'll specify more again you are having the setup function and the loop function just keep in mind friends there are just two functions to be used in arduino one is the setup function the other is the loop function this is the only two function we'll be using most of the times unlike our c language or any other language again you can verify you can compile it once it compiles you can see this green bar it finishes up till here if it is having some error it will point you out here whatever errors it has if there are no errors it will not show you any errors and it will complete for seeing what your serial data what your accelerometer module is picking up you can click on the serial monitor window over here and you can get a window like this get a window like this so over here you can see the x axis parameters the y axis parameters and the z axis parameters so whenever you are tilting your x y and z of your accelerometer module these values are getting changed instantaneously you can see it is 363 next moment it was 380 then 364 so they are randomly changing based on the capacitance values on those accelerometer modules so like i told you the x uh, analog pin of your accelerometer module is picking up some values and our task is to define a particular bandwidth or a particular range so we want a particular range let's say if it is showing 363 as the most common value i define a range from 360 to 370 so if my our uh, this uh, accelerometer module tilts and gives me a value of 360 that is my minimum value if i tilt it backwards in the x direction 370 is my maximum value so anything in between that accelerometer module is going to sense but anything outside those two values the accelerometer module will neglect them it's not going to read those values same is the case for the y axis also and the z axis so as i told you in the beginning basically we will be using a dc motor 9 volt battery nuts and bolts door stop arrangement wooden or plastic block empty plastic cap or medical and use syringe cap st122 ic rf receiver module l293d module these are the receiver section components in the transmitter section we need an arduino board st12eic rf transmitter module and a 9 volt battery along with some wires so the approximate cost of the entire project took us somewhere around 1039 indian rupees well if you uh, we are into some modifications and we will try to get this down to less than almost 500 rupees so the work is going on uh, once this covid thing happens um it's over us Uh, we try to get back to a lab and work on it working and testing procedure so this is the small video uh, it's just a copy of the original video you can see it so uh, as i told you uh, about the code so the code is quite simple in our case we have used the five pins of the accelerometer module that is pin number 18 19 even a23 of the arduino board for your clarity i'll just open up side by side so that it's easy for you okay i think we are getting out of time so um, that's it have you Maybe used yeah, free yeah. arduino instead of arduino what did you do for the programming uh, part okay see uh, we can use arduino uno board it's not mandatory that we use a free uno board free uno is just a copy of the arduino board so you can use both and the code remains same for both of them it's not going to be a difference in the code 
what is the different programming language that can be used in this arduino okay uh, arduino is not having any different uh, programming language you need to write in the arduino ide itself for burning the code in that arduino board you cannot use a separate programming language and it's very simple uh, there are some tutorials you can get it uh, even i can share uh, with ashima those tutorials they are very simple few line of codes you will get through them once you are familiar with the setup function and the loop function sir one question is can we use arduino board or its copy for commercial use uh sir i would like to answer like uh, instead of using the entire arduino board you can simply uh, program the atmega microcontroller on the arduino and then take it out from the arduino board and use few uh, components along with that you can use it for commercial purpose using an arduino for commercial purpose maybe uh, it will be basically a bit costly like i told you the cost is coming was somewhere around 1039 so in order to reduce the cost you uh, it's preferable in commercial do not use arduino as a whole you simply use the controller on it and the few components required for it